Full there when you get there. Nah, that's cool. I like that. Full there now. I'm looking forward to it. Getting out of Florida for a little <laughs> bit. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, it's Chris Potter from Face Production. Hey, let's switch gears here. Uh, we're we're talking uh, to Chris Potter. Uh, <clears throat> Tony Patino's in the studio now. Tony has just directed a documentary about the punk scene back in the uh, 1980s uh, in Tampa. Uh, he's a friend of the show and hanging out here. Chris Potter uh, is in the process of finishing his uh, horror film. Uh, Big Top Evil, Big which Top was Evil. shot down here in uh, the Bradenton, Sarasota area. So we got uh, two filmmakers on uh, at the same time. This is great. What's going on, Chris? Anything new? Well, y yeah, a couple things, actually. We actually uh, have shot now with a couple of, uh, I guess, like Hollywood actors. We had uh, Jayla Rose. He's been in a couple of yeah. uh, movies within He's the movie honest. Insidious. He came out uh, a few weeks ago. And then we actually just shot last week with Bill Mosley from... Uh, you know, Devil's Rejects, House of a Thousand Corpses, some of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films, that type of stuff. So that's cool. Um, it took us a long time to, to get to those people and to raise the funds to get them out, but uh, definitely giving us a little bit of a step up now. So very excited to have those guys in the film. Oh, oh Jay LaRose is going to be in Big Top Evil? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's man, what that's what I thought I picked up there. All right, awesome. Jay LaRose was the first actor we've ever had call into the show yeah yeah the first real movie star we've had call into the show oh so, there you go yeah he was uh yeah he was a great guest i didn't know he was in the area when when did you guys shoot uh this was it was a few weeks ago it was like the ninth or something like that it was a sunday so he's uh yeah, he's actually in orlando and uh he's been on i don't know i guess a little bit of a break but he's able to fit us into his schedule and he came down for a couple days and um, it, was, it was a good shoot. We had a lot of fun with him. He's a really nice guy. Great. Uh, did you did you use extras and stuff in the shoot, or was it just him? Yeah, we had a few extras. Uh, not many, just a couple people to kind of... We shot in this old settler town that's actually it's the Crowley uh, Museum. It's out on uh, Fruitville Road here in Sarasota, way out east. And it's this cool, like, historical mm -hmm. uh, settler town where they have, you know, everything that's back from those times on display and houses and stuff like that. Right. And, they allowed us to film out there, so it was a really cool, it was a great production value, you know, on the set. And uh, he was kind of a guy that was running this town that, you know, used to be a little bit more popular than it is nowadays in the film. And um, he's kind of the only guy there. And the group of seven that's on this road trip in the film stopped by. It's like a roadside attraction, and they're just kind of checking it out. And he comes out with a double barrel shotgun and kind of gives him a little bit of a scare. And then advises them not to continue down the road, which, of course, you know, they're not going to take his advice because then it wouldn't be a horror film. But, right. you know, so, yeah, pretty good. He's a pretty intense guy, you know, when he wants to be, so. Well, look, I apologize. I mean, there may have been something wrong with my email because I didn't get an email <laughs> about showing up to be an extra, and, I, you know, I would have done good. that. I, it, it's my fault. I apologize that I, I, I missed your contact. Again with this. Yeah, we need yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we kind of kept it more of a close set for both <laughs> him and uh, oh, with Joe mostly because, yeah. uh, you know, we had, we had a couple people that have, have done some extra work already in the film, stuff like that, and they just kind of live close by, so we kept it with with those people, but, you know, we definitely thought about you, and there was this yeah. discussion about, yeah. you know, whether or not to have <laughs> you out there, and then, then we figured that, you know, your schedule might be a little bit busy, too, so out of concern and, uh, you know, regards for your situation. No, not at all. My, my, my no. Stress on you. No, on the contrary, my, my schedule is very I, flexible. I think and, that's what they call the Hollywood <clears throat> blow-off. Yeah, that's right. right, there, right there, just saying. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, no, I, I've always kept my schedule open for you guys, you know, uh, uh, I, you know, going back to uh, the last uh, sequences that we shot in the garage there, the workshop, you know, and uh, I just, I mean. Yeah, that was actually, that was a fun, a fun one, that, that little sequence there. We tried to get, you know, a, a solid minute-long shot that's going to have no cuts in it, and it came out pretty good. We're going through right now and doing a, a lot of cleanup and things like that to make it look even better. But yeah. um, well, you're that, welcome. that's a cool shot, really cool one, so I'm glad you could come out to that oh, one. You're welcome. Definitely going to be a showcase shot. Yeah, well, you're welcome. I, you know, I, I, I always give 110 percent. You know, uh, let's. Uh, uh, am I going to get any credit in the movie? I mean, 
Oh, mm. absolutely. Your, your name will show up there, and we'll have a, a special thanks to the show and everything for <laughs> repping the movie, so we really appreciate all that. But absolutely, you will have credit for sure. All right. Well, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of, you know, thinking like maybe assistant director because I did. <laughs> now, hang on. Hang on. I did suggest yeah. I did suggest the prosthetic leg that I had in the trunk of my car, you know, and you said, great, get it, put it on the table. You know, so I got the prosthetic leg, and I'm sitting. It's on the table between me and uh, Lucifer, uh, you know, Lucifer's axe, and uh, you know, <clears throat> and I did save that girl's life because she was choking on the harness. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that was something that I I didn't even know about or see happen until after she was already down. Apparently, she. She actually passed out she and did. was just hanging there, and, and everyone thought she was just acting. Yeah. No, they, they, they had the girl dressed up in the clown makeup, you know, because we're all playing the, the clown, uh, cannibal mm -hmm. clowns. And she's on this, this hoist, this harness from this hoist in this garage, you know, where they hoist up engines and things yeah. like that. And uh, the main character slides open the doors and pushes her aside, and she just swings, you know. And we're all supposed to act like lunatics yeah so we did one or two takes and she was you know flailing and doing this and that and they go back out to do another take and she's limp and i thought maybe she was just resting so you're like okay everybody energy up energy up we're gonna do another take and i had this meat cleaver that dave and i were using as a prop where he cuts off my arm at you know the beginning of the scene he chops my arm off and I said, energy up. And I, I, her feet were right there by my face, so I was tickling her feet with the bottom of the meat cleaver. Nothing. Nothing. And I said, Dave. I said, Dave, because her back was to me. And I said, Dave, it, she's not moving. Is, is she just faking it, or is she, is she in trouble? Dave looks at her and goes, no, her eyes are open. She, she's okay. <laughs> you know? So another 10 seconds go by, and I'm like, Dave, no, seriously, check her, because she's not responding to you when you talk to her. And he's shaking her leg this time, and he's like, hey, are you okay? And suddenly he's like, oh, God, get her down, get her down, you know. And she got down, and she was almost unconscious. Wow. She, was, she had to sit down in the corner, and uh, she was just, like, dizzy. And uh, <clears throat> the harness cut off her circulation, and I heard that she went outside in the parking lot and puked, which we really should have got on film. That would have yeah. been great for the movie, you know. But, uh, yeah, and this was all stuff that actually it, it happened while I was over kind of, uh, you know, reviewing the footage and making minor adjustments in my mind for what I wanted to do. And uh, lucky for us, we actually had a cardiovascular surgeon from Sarasota Memorial out on set that day. <laughs> so he Man. was able to, you know, he was able to take care of her and all that. And apparently it was something to do with uh, the nerves in her legs, I guess some people, I mean, there's a certain pressure, it's like a pressure point, I guess, and yeah. that's what happened. Her body just, you know, it was it was pressure from that harness that she was hanging from, Ooh. and it just put her body into that, almost like put her to sleep, you know, like you see in all the movies. Like, like the, a sleeper hole type or, of thing, yeah. Or, yeah, the, the Vulcan grip or whatever, like that type of thing. Yeah, I remember her out. Yeah, I remember when we, when we shot uh, the scenes that we shot, oh, downtown Sarasota there, uh, you know, the worst I got was some indigestion from Fritos. <laughs> Just saying. Well, there's, there's been a, quite a bit of misfortune on this, this shoot so far. We had uh, uh, one guy, it's all been after we've you know been shooting, but, you know, related to the movie, we had uh, one guy, Miles Hart. He has a uh, an old 50s uh, Chevy Styline car that we were using in the film, and... Uh, unfortunately, we weren't through shooting with it, so we kind of had to make some edits and stuff to the scripts. So we could still make it make sense, but we were driving back from from way out east for shooting on the you know uh, Clark Road, uh, State Road seventy two or something like that, way out east. And we're driving back, and some lady decides to just pull out left in front of him, and he hit her in that car. And of course, oh, no seatbelts, no airbags, stuff like that. So he had to be base lighted out of there. So geez. that was terrible, a really scary moment. We've had people break their ankles, break their feet, just. It's it's been a challenge, <laughs> to say the least. Well, you know, uh, the the good thing about uh, participating is uh, in in the film is your uh, craft services. Um, I'm telling you, I loved the potato chips and the bottled water <laughs> that we had that night. I'm telling you, it was great. It was great because I went down there on an empty stomach. I skipped dinner for, for <laughs> That's right. to get there on time yes. and you know, being part of the film. That's why we had to go downtown looking for food at ten o'clock at night. That's that's what that's what that <clears throat> whole story was about. Yeah. Was we left the set because we didn't start shooting that night till like ten thirty, 
and uh, yeah, the late one. and we and we went down to the checkers downtown and scared the living hell out of about twenty people. <laughs> I mean, they were they, they, they were they just closed, and the people in the drive-through were all freaked out. People walking up the street. And you were very, very, you were very open to to uh, my suggestions as far as uh, shooting past me uh, and getting into the garage. Uh, so you know, again, assistant director. Uh, what you're in for, or Tony. or <laughs> if, well, if, if, I'm sure we could finagle some sort of like yeah. assistant associate first grip to prop maker or huh. something. Exactly. Like I was going to say, or, or like, like a lot of these yeah. titles for film just kind yeah. of throw names out there. Prop but, master, yes. prop master. <laughs> Because I was, I'm the only one who shows up with a prosthetic leg. Now, nobody else carries a prosthetic leg in the trunk of their car. Me. Why do you have I do that? It. That's true. That's he's being just prepared. Yeah, that's being prepared. I, I found it at, <laughs> at an abandoned house. Some guy left it in the garage. And I just said, well, it's mine now. So, <laughs> Sorry, so, Grandma. Yeah. Just took it. It's mine. Yeah, you were <clears throat> definitely blessed with the gift of foresight there. Exactly. I knew it would come in handy sometime. And, and here we are talking about eating body parts and stuff like that. Boom, throw the leg on the table. It add some uh, drama to the scene. And I'm, uh, and I'm yeah. only too happy to do that with a little bit of credit. Yeah. <laughs> with a whole lot of credit. <laughs> hey, if I can ask a question, uh, how, what type of time frame does it take to complete a film, a project like what you're working on right now? Well... <laughs> With the budget we're working with, which uh, according to uh, the, I don't know, the charts for budgets, I, I think it's called an ultra-low budget uh, production, which basically means you know essentially nothing in, in film terms. I think we're working with about, all, all said, it's, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $50,000. So um, there's a lot of volunteer work, and that definitely draws things out a little bit more. If we had more money to throw at it, we could have gotten it done a lot quicker. But when we're dealing with people's schedules and actors that are getting paid next to nothing and, and extras that are getting paid nothing and things like that, um, you know, it takes a lot longer. So right now we're about at 13 months, and we are planning to have it done, at least uh, cut up and submitted to uh, the Sarasota Film Festival by their deadline, which is the 7th, I believe, of January. There you go. So cool. a little over a year. That's not bad, really. Hey, how, how, not, not too bad. I mean, it's it's hard because, you know, as time goes on, it's a lot harder to fight continuity. And you have people, you know, people change in a year. It's amazing how much people change. You have people that move away right. and changing hairstyles and, and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot to combat. And you deal with all that stuff like, you know, you hear about famous actors and, uh, you know, whatever, having injuries or, or, God forbid, dying or things like that. But stuff that all comes into play over a year's time. And luckily, we haven't had anything that unfortunate happen. But yeah, with the accidents and things we've had, it's it's kind of nerve wracking to you think getting seventy five percent of the way through this film and having you know a couple you know more well known actors in it to have something catastrophic happen would just ruin the whole project. So it'd be a lot nicer to get it done quicker. But of course, you know we don't have that kind of budget yet. So it's it's getting there though. It's we're pretty proud of how it's coming out. How, uh, how difficult, well, I don't know anything about the process, and this is what Tony uh, and I were talking about when, about his documentary. I said, are you going to enter it in any film festivals? And mm -hmm. he's never participated, or he never approached that type of thing before. How difficult was it for you to get something entered into the Sarasota Film Festival? Well, What's the it, process? Really kinda, it really kind of depends. With, with documentaries, I was kind of listening before, documentaries, it doesn't seem like it's quite as difficult uh, for film festivals. Of course, you have to know, you know your target, festivals that you're going to submit it to because there is a submission fee uh, to a lot of them. So if you're going for, you know, like your Sundances and your cans and stuff like that, then you probably won't get in. We're not hoping to get into it's any of those. We'll submit them just on the off chance they do accept us. But then there's more specific film festivals. Like for us, there's, you know, the uh, what Scream Fest or whatever out in L.A. And there's a bunch of horror film festivals that we'll be targeting. Right. And uh, it's, it's not too difficult, really. It's just as long as you meet certain requirements. So with Mangrove Slasher, we did have a little bit rougher of a time getting them in because when we made the film, it, our only goal was to get it into the Sarasota Film Festival. That's just where we were at. You know, we wanted to have a film that was in the festival because we hadn't done that before and it was just something to do. And... From doing that, we learned a lot and got a lot more serious with our craft, but uh, Mangrove Slasher was technically a feature film, but it was only 47 minutes, so you have that issue there. Most festivals for feature films, they want them to be longer. You know, In distribution, they want them to be longer. They want them to be like an hour 15 to an hour and a half, something along those lines. So yeah. 
Um, you know, some festivals did, we didn't get into, and we submitted to a bunch of them, like Screen Fest out in L.A. It's a little bit bigger than our last movie uh, could really contend with. But, uh, no, it's not, not too difficult as long as you meet those deadlines and just meet the guidelines that they have for you. It's not that bad. And what about distribution? Is, is that all something you've, you've already figured all that out? Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know how it works with documentaries, to be honest. Uh, I haven't done any documentary work, really, so I, I don't know. With our film, um, we did learn a lot, like I said, with our last project, and, of course, the time was our biggest thing for distribution. They wanted it to be longer, so that really killed us with distribution. And of course, yeah. we weren't even thinking about that at the time. That was only an afterthought, like, oh, wow, we did something that might be good enough for distribution, so let's try that, and kind of got turned down because of that, and that's also another reason we got some of these actors in it, was because uh, we found out that that's something that they look for, you know, they want names attached to the project, even if they're not starring in it, it's just having those names attached to it really helps your chances, so there's kind of like a, a, a little bit of a formula for it, you want to have it a certain time, you want to have these actors in it, you want to have... Um, you know, it's nice to be affiliated with SAG, which we actually uh, just got about a month ago. We're actually you know, a SAG signatory or something like that. I don't, I don't know exactly, but which is basically just a, a bunch of paperwork and, and filling out a bunch of contracts and stuff with every single actor and extra that you have in there. And uh, eventually we're going to have to get this, like, it's like a liability insurance or something like that, which means if we have any brands or anything that's in the film that we didn't quite catch, just in case we get sued, or, or say there's an actor that we didn't get the proper form filled out or it was, you know, it wasn't correct. You know, it's, it covers us with that, which is like another $20,000 or something. But then again, I don't know how it works with documentaries. It's probably completely different. This is just yeah. what we're up against. Well, uh, yeah, I've already kind of, uh, I know some people that have gotten their documentary films into a company called MVD, which is Music Video Distributors, which I'm sure you've heard of. And uh, okay. so I've kind of got it in there, but I just, I haven't, let them see it yet uh i think they'll probably sure. i think they'll probably pick it up but it's just i want it to be absolutely perfect when i give it to them you know right and right so so you haven't even sent them a screen or anything like that then no no yeah i, I, so, I screen the film down here that way people involved in the film which because it's about tampa can look at it and kind of give me their input and they did that so now i'm going to edit it again and then it'll be done and then i'll give it to them so. Yeah, that's that's a good way to go about it. Definitely, you know, show it to a, a select group of people, you know, a smaller festival, and then, of course, everyone that's involved with it, just to get their feedback, and then you can go back and really polish it up. Yeah. Because um, that's where we're at right now. We have a couple different companies that contacted us after we released the trailer uh, for the film. We had it on a couple bigger horror websites like Dread Central, and uh, there's been a few... Um, but a couple of distributors did contact us wanting to see screeners, and we told them, you know, we're not we're not even at that point yet, but we'll let you know as soon as we have it. Um, but yeah, we we definitely want to get it nice and finished and and as good as we can possibly make it before we send it out. So we're right there with you with that one. Cool deal. Well, listen, if you need names, you know, use mine. Um, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't have to be above Jay LaRose. Obviously, I'm no Jay LaRose, but you know, you think about it, it's a horror flick. Starring Sick Mick. Think about that. That works. That works. <laughs> and these guys. You know, what we need to have is uh, on, on the cover of like the, the DVD and any movie posters. We'll have a starring section that covers the entire <laughs> front of the poster with every possible name we could throw out there. <laughs> no, the just mine. Promoting it. No, just mine. <laughs> and, and Not he, every he possible might, name. He might be able to hook you up with from what we were talking about earlier, China and Joey Buttafuoco. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to be guests on the show in the future, so if you need them, uh, we can probably... Talk about some right. clowns. I know China will work for cheap. She's broke, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you will probably be, uh, probably be too past that point at the, for this project, but there will be more <laughs> projects in the future. So yeah. any contact we can possibly have, you know, it's great to have it. So, yeah. you know, just keeping those relations so, is so listen, just think, important to us. Think about this, think about this. Assistant director, okay, ponder that. Uh, prop master... Director. Prop master, or think about it, principal photographer, because I posted like 200 photos from that night on your page in a folder, you know. So uh, there's like two. annoyance. <clears throat> think of it that way. So, yeah, so there's like a ton of photos for everybody to click on and look at the actors and us all in makeup and getting in makeup and in production and all that stuff, too. So, you know, a little credit. That's all I'm saying. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, absolutely. No, no, it, it, That's exactly. Let's, let's do lunch. Chris, 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 <laughs> Chris is looking at his watch like, okay, <laughs> interview <laughs> over. Uh, so. like, would you look at the time? <clears throat> All right, listen, I know you're knee-deep in this thing and trying to get it all finished. Any ideas? Do you have anything on the slate for the future? Any projects that you, you, you think you would want to do in the future? Uh, to be honest, yeah, we do have uh, a couple projects that we're kind of tossing around right now, and I have, I have a couple personal things, too, that are, are scheduled after this, bo- this movie's done and, and finished and out there to begin production on, or at least begin pre-production. Um, but, no, we don't know exactly where we're going after this. So this has kind of been like... You know, every bit of energy we've had, we've been putting into this yeah. film, just trying to do as much as we can with it, so we really haven't had even much time to think about that. We do have uh, a couple of scripts that are close to being finished, but then again, we could just write something completely different. You know, True. we haven't True. thought too much about that. Um, are they all in the, uh, the the horror genre? Are you are we working in it? Think about maybe another genre. Yeah, well, we'd like to branch out from that. Of course, me personally, too, I'd love to branch out from the horror a little bit. Uh to do other films, you know, there's a lot more of a budget required for certain things. So horror is definitely something you can do on a lower budget. Um, it won't be too far from it, but it will be, you know, not the blood and guts thing. Like something I'm thinking about doing is more of a, a suspense kind of thriller type movie instead of, you know, the chop them up, just gruesome type of thing. You know, right. a lot less killing, more more plot development and things like that. You right. know, so. That's where I'm probably going to head to next, and uh, keep the comedy. We love the comedy, um, but yeah, probably similar, but but definitely not the same. All right, here's another idea. When <laughs> no, no, <laughs> hang on, hang on, wait, 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 hang on, on. <laughs> hang on. Let me lay it on him. All right, for the uh, for the premiere at the uh, at the Sarasota Film Festival. Uh huh. Okay, what if we show up dressed as the characters in the movie to the premiere? Oh, that's, that's great. We did that with Mangrove Slasher, actually. We had, uh, across the street, There's uh, there was another radio station that we kind of, we were inside there earlier in the day, but we, they just let us kind of set up across the street. We actually had uh, a slushy machine that was making these alcoholic slushies. We called Mangrove Slashies, and uh, had a bunch of people all in wardrobe. We actually had a Mangrove Slasher standing out there. So we'll be doing something like that for this one. So absolutely, we'll, we'll talk about that and it's going to be even more grandiose than the last one. But that was great. You know, it was a lot of fun doing that because we got so much attention just from doing that thing that uh, there was another movie that was in the film festival at the same time that had a much bigger budget and, of course, a lot more publicity. And the attention all shifted to us just from that little publicity stunt. So we're definitely going to do something like that for this movie. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's cool. I mean, I got all the photos. I still have the, the, the clothes. I mean, all I got to do is just put the makeup back on. And if we, you know, we, we still have the, the costume. So we just show down there and whatever you want us to do. I mean, hang out and meet and greet Absolutely. or just uh, act like Absolutely. lunatics or, you know. just Yeah, just we, we'll talk about that for sure because we're definitely going to be doing that. So, um, yeah, just plan on that. Put that on your schedule because it will be happening. And we don't know, of course when our movie's going to show at the festival, but once we actually submit it and it comes down to that time, we'll let you know that information and, and you know, meet up with you and let you know what we're going to do, but it'll definitely be happening. Yeah, you, you have my email address, right? I, cause, yep. it, all right, good, because I think I got that email thing st- sorted yeah. out, so... Uh, my personal phone number. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah, you <laughs> know. <clears throat> but no, I mean, so far, four That's of us, my uh, it's Mike, it's uh, Keith... Myself, uh, Robin, who does another show here on the station, mm-hmm. she, those the, the three of them went down for the first uh, uh, to help you with the one that one particular night, and I was there for the garage segment. So, I mean, we, we just we like getting involved in these types of things. We like to uh, you know branch out and network and just if you know we want to get into films and if someone can use us, use us. And then, and again, it's the same with the radio show. If you want to get to the radio show and talk and about films, us. talk about films and things like that. You know, I mean, that, we're all about that, too. We've had Sadistic on here with Lucifer, and uh, we had a great time with them. And, you know, just uh, I just tapping into the whole creative scene that's just over the Skyway Bridge, you know. Absolutely. So, you know, by all means, don't be a stranger to the show. Call in anytime you want. Stop by anytime you want. We're in Bradenton. Uh, so anytime you want to come in and hang out on a Wednesday night, you're more than welcome to do that. And, uh, cool. you know, if you need us for any uh, future scenes projects if you need extras or or whatever i mean i can 
Heck, I can bring barbecued potato chips and water. You know, <laughs> I mean, if you want to, you know, next time. I, I don't know. know. I don't know if people can handle that. That's Skittles. That's kind of a step up. <laughs> we are an ultra low budget production, after all. So, you can bring Skittles if yeah. that's what you need. So uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Like I said, you know, I, I definitely want to attend the premiere. I want to go to the Sarasota Film Festival. I want to check it out. I want to be a part of it. And I just just thinking off the top of my head, hey, what if we got into character and just showed up for the for the premiere and just, uh, you know, piqued everybody's interest and got them interested in the movie? They won't let us. It in. makes it a lot more fun. It really yeah. does. It yeah. turns it into a party almost. Exactly. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah. you can't have too many parties. But. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It, it, it livens up the scene and it's not so uh, stuffy, you know? So. Yep. But, yeah, uh, especially when you have all these people from Sarasota, you know, just dressed to the nines and uh, right. you know, <laughs> turning their nose up at the the slasher type films. That it, it kind of breaks the ice a little bit more. So yeah, yeah, very yeah, we, cool. We can get Keith to chew up some uh, peanut butter pretzels and get some of that spit <laughs> on these people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dressed up, pretend like we're eating, like we're eating some yeah. human flesh and stuff yes. like that. Human flesh. We, yeah, we're. You I should, mean, we're, uh, you should go <clears> on to um, Miss Sadistic's. Uh, uh, Facebook page and look up some of the pictures from how both uh, her and Lucifer's axe dressed up for the Mangrove Slasher premiere. Uh, it's t- typical of them for sure. You should uh, you should see it. It's pretty oh, outlandish. No, no, we did. Yeah, we no, we did. We mm-hmm. saw that. In fact, uh, Robin, who does the Robin Report during, in the afternoons, she's the one who listened to our show and said, you know, you need to get this person on this this Miss Sadistic. She was going to be good because she met them at the the, the film festival. She oh, goes, great. Yes, and that's how we came in contact with him. She goes, here, contact Sadistic. She'd be great for your show. So sure enough, she and Dave showed up for the night, and uh, we had a really good time with them, and you know, we, we became good friends with them. So that's how, And that's okay. how we met you, because then Sadistic said, hey, there's this other thing going on called uh, you know, uh, uh, Big Top Evil, and uh, they might yep. need some extras. And we said, let us know. We're here. Use us. You know? Yeah, those guys are great. They're just great people, so and definitely really good friends of ours. So we appreciate everything they do. They do so much for our production. Oh yeah, it's unbelievable. Dave sometimes. was Dave was great. Dave put on my makeup, and and I, <clears throat> I was so busy trying to soak in everything that was going on, I forgot about me. And Dave was like, you know, do you know, do this, do this. He was actually directing me at the table, saying, "Get your energy <laughs> up. Say this. Look at me this way." I mean, it was really good. He was he knew exactly what was going on. How how to fit me into the scene and i started to feel comfortable by, by the third take i was like okay okay you're right you're right i gotta shut this other stuff out and focus on this and you know and then that's when i that's when i i killed it so i nailed sure, it sure make sure that if you give <clears throat> make any credit you give dave credit for mix inspiration right acting inspired coach inspired by dave <laughs> acting coach the way All it's right, gotta so. be so I know assistant director's asking for a lot, but uh, <laughs> prop master's good and principal photographer. I'll settle for those. Sounds good. All right, man. Listen, <laughs> we appreciate you calling in, and please, I'm serious. For this, we all want to go to the premiere, and whether you want us in, in costume or not, you know, we're, we're going to show up, but I think it would just be good for costume. So just keep in touch with us and let us know, and we'll, we'll make uh, a point to uh, get down there and get it done. We'll have some fun. Great. Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Chris Potter. Uh, you can uh, find Chris Potter on Facebook, but more important, you can find his film on Facebook. It's called Big Top Evil. Go to the page, hit the like button, and uh, watch the trailer that's on there. The trailer is amazing. The trailer is great. The trailer just floored say. me. I was just, I, I was just like, it looked like something right out of, you know, a big studio. I was just like, wow. I can't believe these oh. guys did it. It was just very, very, very impressive. So I'm looking to see the, the, the whole thing. So by all means, keep in touch, and we'll keep in touch with you. Okay, sounds good, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, have a great night. You too. Thanks. Chris Potter, everybody. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. I can't wait to see the, the end product. And Keith, a couple weeks ago, said, hey, Jay LaRose is in town working on a film. Yeah, well, and I was like, ah, I wish we had sense. known, and we could have gotten him to stop by the studio. Hey, you know, turns out he was working with Chris. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, it's all about the mix show. Nothing happens without the mix show. World. That's right. You it's know, tiny. We we bring people <laughs> like together, Keith, like Keith Peck. We bring people together. <laughs> we are the glue. We are the glue. We bring people together. And then those people turn their backs on us, do documentaries, yes. and yes. never mention they, our name. No.